Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome once again to the shadow world of mystery and suspense, to a dark and cryptic universe called the imagination. When we were young, we liked to believe there are things money cannot buy. You know, things like love, happiness. But as we grow older and learn more about the world, well, we're not so sure. As a matter of fact, many of us even begin to believe that the only thing money cannot buy is a fresh new body and a chance to live another lifetime. Well, don't be too sure of that. Our mystery drama, The Forever Man, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by New Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Great taste in the morning. Kellogg's, Kellogg's has that wholesome taste to get you up and grinning. This is Jerry Coffer for Kellogg's Special K. You know, for years we've been talking about the Special K breakfast, a great way to start the day if you have a weight problem. You may have seen or heard our latest commercials, which symbolize the problem of being a few pounds overweight by using this ball and chain. That's the sound effect. But so many people have come to know the Special K breakfast that can help solve weight problems, they sometimes forget that Special K is America's favorite high-protein cereal. It has eight essential vitamins and iron, and so delicious that lots of folks, kids as well as adults, eat Special K just for the sheer good taste of it. So we don't want you to think that you have to wear a ball and chain to eat Special K. All you need is an appreciation for the finer things of life, a one-ounce bowl of Special K, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, coffee, and maybe a little sugar. The Special K breakfast can help you lose weight all by itself. But it really is a good start. America. We're big on that. New York, Denver, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Dallas, Fort Worth. Ozark's two-thirds transcontinental, serving more than 60 cities, all very important to us, and to the millions of people we serve each year. America. We're big on that at Ozark Airlines. Now, go Ozark's evening jet at 6.45 to Washington through service to Champaign, Urbana, and Peoria. Right now, Suburban Savings in Northern Jersey is not only offering you a good deal, it's offering you a good deal more for your money. Here's the deal. You can get a top 7.90% effective annual yield on Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate. And Suburban guarantees it for from 4 to 10 years. Minimum deposit, $2,500. Early withdrawal prior to maturity is subject to a substantial penalty. What's the big deal about Suburban's big deal? Plenty. For one thing, Suburban compounds interest continuously from day of deposit paid quarterly. So you not only get interest on your savings, you get interest on the interest. And Suburban offers you the highest interest rate allowed by law. So you couldn't find a better deal anywhere. Come into any suburban of savings office in northern Jersey and get a good deal and a good deal more. 7.90% annual effective yield on suburban's limited issue, 7.50% savings certificate. In Bayonne, Edgewater, Elmwood Park, Emerson, Hackettstown, Mars Plains, Nutley, Paramus, and Sparta, North Jersey. great religions agree on one important point. The soul leaves the body after death. However, from time to time, the question has been raised, can the soul leave before the body dies? Philosophers have considered the point, and as usual in these matters, have reached no consensus of opinion. Actually, they have found it difficult to define just exactly what the soul is. Well, we're about to meet a young man named Jackson Hanley, who will soon become intimately concerned with the problem, even though no one has ever accused him of being a philosopher. He has, however, often been accused of other things, which is why our story opens in what is a rather familiar locale for Jack Hanley, a police station. Well, if it isn't an old and reliable customer, Jack Hanley, the cop fighter himself. Ah, why don't you just count the tiles on the ceiling, Jack? I'll be with you in a minute. Sergeant Burns here. Oh, hiya, sweetheart. Nothing, nothing. I just have to dispose of an old client. Yeah, he can wait. What's with Junior? He did. <laughs> he said, Daddy, uh, I told you he was a genius. 
No, sure, me darling. You can always call me up with news like that. That's right. Goodbye. Ah, well, Jack, Jack, what are we going to do with you? I guess I'm just a bad boy, Sarge. Why do you fight with cops, Jack? I don't like to get pushed around. Well, there's no percentage in it. Yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, you can't win. So what? All you do is wind up in a cell with a black eye and uh, a fat lip. <laughs> Look, maybe there's a law that says I got to go to the cooler. But is there a law that says I got to listen to you? <laughs> Jack, I got great news for you. Yeah, like what? Take a real wild guess, Jack. Okay. Somebody came along and posted bond. That's right. What's right? Somebody came along and posted bond. What are you talking about? You guessed it. <laughs> are you kidding? No. It's on the level. But who'd post the bond for me? I don't know. Maybe you got a fairy godmother. You mean I can just walk out of here? There's the door. Take off. That's all there is to it? That's all. You mean you ain't even going to give me the speech? Oh, Jack, on your way, will you? I don't have all day to fool around with every hood that's hauled in here. <laughs> Mr. Henley. Who are you? How do you do? My name is Fraser. Leroy Fraser. Yeah? What can I do for you? Not nearly as much as I can do for you. How'd you know my name? Oh, I know quite a bit about you, Mr. Henley. Yeah? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, I posted bond for you this morning. Oh. Why? Would you believe I'm a wealthy old man who likes to do good deeds? No. Then why do you suppose I did it? You want something? Excellent. You, Mr. Hanley, are a realist. No illusions. Exactly the man I'm looking for. To do what? First, to take me somewhere. You drive a car? Oh, but of course you do. You even race cars when you can. I'm parked at the curb. That... that imported sports job? That's yours? It's one of mine. One of my cheaper cars, I might add. Gee, I never saw one like that outside of a magazine. Are you afraid to drive it? Hand over the keys. Where to? Not far, the Pershing Arm. Hey, that's a pretty classy joint. I find it adequate. Why'd you post my bond? You already know I want something. What? Let us say... My share of eternity. <laughs> what does that mean? Are you willing to take a job? Doing what? For one thing, you'll drive this car. Chauffeur, that's a drag. The car will be yours. Mine? You'll need it to get around. Where would I be going? You'll find out after lunch. Why not now? It's a long story. Yeah. Listen, Mr. Fraser, I better straighten you out. Please do. I, uh... You see, I'm a guy who gets into trouble. I know. Yeah, it's because, well, maybe I got a bad temper, you see. The rather low boiling point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so, well, I get into fights. I get arrested. I'm aware of that. But I'm not a crook. You understand? I understand perfectly. Yeah, so, this thing, uh, well, it better not be something I could go to jail for. Jack, I assure you, it's a pure and simple out-and-out -out private business agreement. But to do what? Something that is mutually profitable. But well, what is that? Ah, pull over. Oh. We're at the Pershing Arms. Uh-huh. What's here? Your apartment. My apartment? All ready and waiting. Well, I, uh... I hope the place is satisfactory. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, come over here and look. What a magnificent view of the park. Yeah, but hold on. We got some things In to straighten. In the kitchen, the freezer's stocked with steaks. Yeah, that's fine, but listen. A listen, splendid uh... hi-fi and stereo. Mm. A liquor cabinet. Sure, that's all very nice, Fraser, but, uh, but... But what, Jack? What is all this about? I promise to tell you after lunch. Well, why do I have to wait? I'll see you at my place at 3 o'clock. Hey, well, now, wait a minute. Where are you going? I to wanna... my apartment. I have a duplex down the hall. I thought we were going to have lunch. I always eat alone. Oh, oh uh, I'd forgotten. Huh? You'll need money. 
Money? For expenses. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, what, what, what kind of 300 expenses? 300 should see you through the next couple of days. 300? Uh, well, I... Uh, On second thought, let's be safe and make it five. Five. You see, 50, 100, a two, three, four, and five, hundred. There you are. Enjoy lunch. But, Mr. Fraser, I gotta know what I'm getting into. Is it, uh... Is it bad so far? How'd you like the pad, huh? What's the catch? Nothing. Jack, you're talking to me, Della, remember? Well, there's this guy. Which guy? An old guy, Mr. Fraser. He puts up my barn. Why? I don't know. He gives me the car. Why? I don't know. And he gives me a job. Doing what? I don't know. He even gives me 500 in advance. Oh, I don't like it. But you're always on to me to get a job. Okay, I got a job. A job, sure, but something like this? Jack, it has to be a setup. What kind of setup? I don't know. That's what's wrong. You see, we both keep saying, I don't know. You don't know what the job is, and I don't know why I don't like it. Look, Bella, I figure it this way. No, Jack, don't you figure. Figuring always gets you into trouble. But you have to figure he's an old nut, right? And he's out to throw his dough away for kicks. So why shouldn't I catch some of it? I still don't like it. You mean there are no old nuts like him? It don't happen? Oh, in storybooks, maybe. In the movies, maybe. Oh, Jack. Jack, listen to me. You're 500 ahead. Now, let's get out of here right now. Well, uh, this is a gold mine. You think so? And this 500, that's just what's lying around on the top. Oh, Jack, I'm scared. Of what? I, I can't explain it. I'm just scared, that's all. Look, I can handle it. Oh, sure. Sure, I know how you can handle it the way you think you can handle everything with your fists. Oh, you just won't learn. Well, uh, I know. I... Well, okay, maybe I'm stupid. But that's why I can't turn down a chance like this, don't you see? No, there's something about this place. It's... It's creepy. There's something in the air here. I don't smell nothing. E even the books on the shelves. <laughs> hey, I didn't notice that. Hey... <laughs> You know, these feel like leather. I bet they cost a bundle. Jack, just read these titles. The Transmigration of the Soul. Mm. The Experience of Metempsychosis. <laughs> One Soul, Two Bodies. Stella, you don't have books like this to read. You keep them around to give the joint a touch of class. These books are old, Jack. So old. Then they got to be worth a lot of dough. Yeah, and all of them are about souls that leave the body. Well... Isn't that what happens when people die? Okay, Jack. You got all the answers. I just wish you knew some of the questions. Oh, you must be Mr. Jack Handley. Come in, come in. Uh, now, I I'm going to confide in you, because you look like an honest young person. Uh, who, who are you? Oh, I'm Mrs. Toomey, Mr. Fraser's housekeeper. Oh, shh, let's not make a sound. Why? What's uh, up? Uh, Mr. Fraser's... Oh, how to put this? Well, he, he isn't well, and, and so you should do nothing to excite him. Okay. Uh, uh, dear old gentleman, I, I do believe that... Aha! Uh -huh. That can only be our Jack Henley. Here it is, three o'clock, and here you are, right on time. Mr. Fraser, you promised the doctor to take a nap. And I did. Also to take a pill. And I shall. Now, Mrs. Toomey, excuse us. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I, I hope you and the young gentleman have a, a most agreeable afternoon. Well, Jack, ready to go to work? I'm ready to be told what the work is. What do you want? I want to make you rich. <laughs> Why? One step at a time. You asked me what I wanted. I told you. Why is another question and tomorrow is another day. Okay. Did you know that you are now the owner of a Mark Nine Borghese Fratelli? Here are the registration papers made out in your name. <laughs> Surprised? Why? I told you the car was yours. Yeah, but I thought just to Now, use... please, sign these documents. Well... What kind of document? Merely applications for bank accounts, Jack. Now, Jack, take that suspicious look off your face. 
You've filled out cards like these before. Well, w w what kind of bank account? I said I wanted to make you rich. Therefore, I intend to give you a rather large sum of money. Now, do you want to carry half a million dollars around in cash? Half a million? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, you can't carry it around in your pocket, can you? Uh, well? Uh, of course not. So we put it in the bank. In your name. Uh, uh, Mr. Fraser, I don't want to get you all upset, but... Look, I have to know why. Is that what's bothering you? Yeah, that's what's bothering me. How do I know you ain't setting me up, huh? Jack, how, I how assure I you that I am a completely reputable businessman. Yeah, but... Yeah, sometimes they're the worst kind. Look, it all comes down to this. What do you want? That's a fair enough question, I suppose. Jack... I want your body. Hey, wait. Uh, I want your body. And in exchange, I'll give you mine. Well, now, let's place this thing in perspective. The art of exchange, of trade, is as old as history. Men have traded almost everything you can think of. Empires, goods even wives. So, just because you never heard of people trading bodies doesn't mean it can't be done. Buick introduces a new concept for you to consider in light of all the concern about miles per gallon. Range. Range is what you get when you multiply the mileage your car gets per gallon by the number of gallons your car's gas tank holds. Range is one of the things that help make Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon gas tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. Oh, sure. You can talk about good-tasting diet drinks, but I know. I'm Goldilocks, and here at my taste-testing laboratory, I taste-test them all. And nobody's been drinking my diet drinks. Until I tested sugar-free Diet 7-Up. And then, kabloomy, every bear wanted some. Diet 7-Up is fresh, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up. This one's just right. Hey, ma'am, what's for dinner? Hey, ma'am, what you got? Here is ShopRite's suggestion for a delightful cookout dish. Boneless top round or sirloin tip steaks, just $1.69 a pound. Delicious cooked over the coals. Just as delicious pan broiled indoors. For a busy night, here's a quick dinner idea. Freezer Queen family size frozen casseroles. All varieties except beef, just 99 cents for the two pound size at ShopRite. For dessert, Pepperidge Farm layer cake, 17 ounce box, 69 cents in ShopRite's frozen food case. Cooking out or cooking in, ShopRite has the answer. She loves the family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. Here's an offer you might not get every day. Say you're a young man of about 28, tall, strong, attractive, and a frail, elderly gentleman offers you a fortune to exchange bodies with him. What do you do? Laugh? Edge away quickly? Notify the men in the white coats? Jack Hanley has just received such an offer, but he's still sitting there because the old man has already put his money where his mouth is. I become you, you become me. But how could that happen? Let us say it could happen. So, you're saying I become a sick old guy who's going to kick off in a couple of years, and you get a whole lifetime? Jack, you're 28. You've been in serious brawls. You've been arrested for breach of the peace. You've cracked up several cars. How long do you think you can live? Two years? Three years? Your luck has run out. You'll die and your body will go to waste. What are you giving up? A lifetime? No. A few years, maybe months, perhaps even days. You can't afford to turn me down, Jack. But what you're saying, I, it's impossible. Let me worry about that. 
This way, you're guaranteed two to three years of a life of luxury. But, but how could you and me exchange bodies? It would be a sort of transplant. No, no. No, no, no dice. None of that operating room for me. No surgery. That is no physical surgery. This would be psychic surgery of a sort. What are we even talking about it for? The whole thing is crazy. It's a joke. Well, then the joke would be on me, wouldn't it? But I'm willing to take the chance. You are, huh? I'm willing to enter into a verbal agreement with you. I agree to place at least half a million dollars in your name, in return for which, on demand, you permit me to take over your body. Do you agree? <laughs> it could never happen. I need your agreement. But I don't believe it. Whether you believe it or not, you have to state the following if you want all this money. You must say... Yeah. I agree to the exchange of bodies with Leroy Fraser. <laughs> but it is crazy. I must have the statement, or we have no deal. Okay. If it'll make you happy, I agree to the, uh, what was it? Exchange Change of bodies, bodies with Leroy Fraser. With Leroy Fraser. Okay. Well, now, that's in order. So, what about this, uh, job? Hmm? The job? Yeah. Oh, don't you see? Your job is to enjoy life until such time as you are required to surrender your body. Oh. I might add, you must take excellent care of it. Uh, uh, not that this could ever happen, Fraser, but, um, I mean, how do you enforce a thing like this? I mean, just suppose, uh, if and when the time ever comes, I, I just tell you to go and soak your head. Too late. You've already agreed. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, uh, my name is Mr. Soames. Do you need help? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Hanley. Uh, Jack Hanley. Hanley, Hanley. Did, did you say Hanley? Yeah. Oh, please, sit down, sir. Oh. Have a chair. No, no, not this one. Uh, this one. Oh. Here, sir. Uh, okay. This is so much more comfortable. Uh, a cigar? Uh, no, no, no. I, I just wanted to check on check? the... Uh... Oh, check? Uh, by all means, sir. Check us, inspectors, audit and balance us constantly. We will measure up to your highest expectations. Uh, no, well, And I... we are honored that uh... a man of your standing should have chosen our bank. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. I, I, I just uh, wanted to make sure that the, uh, the account... The account, sir? Yeah, yeah, that there... That there is an account. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. The account in your name has been opened, and it's in perfect order. You will find us your kind of banking institution. I've been to all the banks. You know how much it adds up to? $590,000. Well, say something. What do you want me to say? I, I want you to say what you think. You know what I think. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Oh, you've got to break that agreement somehow. Agreement? You know, I listen to your talk, and I wonder, have you got all your marbles? You did make an agreement with this, Mr. Fraser. All I did was I went along with a gag to keep some old nut happy. But it's an agreement. Look, all right, why don't we just forget it, huh? Okay. You know, I, I think I've figured out a way you can break it. Who wants to break don't... it? touch the money. Don't take a nickel that's in the banks. Now, how much of the 500 did you spend? Now, look here. And give him back the car with a full tank of gas. No, no. No, no. This baby is mine. All mine. Oh, please, Jack. You know where we're headed tonight? Meridian Oval. Jack. Yes, ma'am. I called up the whole crowd. Spread the word. Jack is back. Jackie, you're not going to race. In this one? <laughs> won't be a race. It'll be like wheeling the baby home. Jack, suppose... Suppose some... I crack up the car, so what? So what? Yeah, so what? This heap goes for 21 thou. Big deal. All I got to do is write out a check. You... That's all there is to it. Listen, I got to educate you on how to behave. You see, uh, you never had any real dough in your life. Jack, you don't understand. Another thing. I'm getting sick and tired of being told by you that I don't understand. Jack, this Mr. Fraser... He wouldn't make an agreement like that unless he knows something. Or unless he's lost all his marbles and he's a loon. I got the inside dope from his housekeeper. Give it all back. You know, Della, you're starting to be a drag. Oh, Jack, I, I'm only thinking of what's best for you. You know, 
I found out what money is these past few days. I found out. You know what money is? Everything. Now, sir, all of a sudden you're Mr. Hanley, and it's... Yes, sir, Mr. Hanley. It's an honor, Mr. Hanley. And you know what? I like it. Oh, Jack. I just wish I could... Save it. Now, just ask yourself a question. All the time we've been running around together, you were smart, I was dumb. Is that the way you wanted it? What are you talking about? Were you looking for the kind of setup where you call the shots? I only tried... You need a guy who's a dummy so you can be the wise one? Oh, Jack, if I've been... Well, if I've been making the decisions, it was only because it I wanted It was only because you wanted to. You were against this from the first minute. You didn't even know what it was, and you were against it without even knowing why you're against it. Well, I'm still against it. What, what are you stopping for? So you can get out if you don't like it. Oh, is that how it is? Yeah, baby, that's exactly how it is. Well, goodbye, Jack. Oh, you're kidding. You'll come back. Ha! You always come back. Hey, Jack, where'd you get them wheels? What do you say, Jer? What are you trying to do, blow us all off the track? I see the word is out, huh? <laughs> Crazy, Jack. Man, you won't be happy till you kill yourself, huh? Look at me now, Jerry, old buddy, because in five more minutes, you won't see me for dust. Boy, a car like that, on a two-bit track like this. I'm just warming up for the big time, Jer. Yeah, but it's been a couple of years since and you I'm were... I'm better than ever. Hey, there's a flag. Yeah. See you, Jerry. Well, hello, George. George. <laughs> Do I look like somebody whose name would be George? Oh, yes, yes. The voice is different. But there's the same kind of spirit she had. She? Who? George. George Sand. And who was George Sand? A friend of mine. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for Jack Hanley. How did you get into the apartment? Same way you did, I have a key. Oh, I came here to give mine back. Oh, you must be the old guy. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Well, you don't look so old. Thank you. Well, everybody's here. Oh, Jack, what, what happened to your face? Nothing, a couple of scratches. I walked away from it. From what? I hit the turn too fast. I totaled the car. So what? Jack! Look, that's enough out of you. What are you doing here, anyhow? Well, I thought... Maybe we could... No, 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 no. We do things my way or no way. All right, Jack. Then it's no way. Goodbye. And this time I mean it. Sure. See you tomorrow. Well, Fraser, what can I do for you? You cracked up the car tonight. I can afford another one. Our agreement calls for you to take care of your body. Have a cigar, Pop? By continuing to take foolish risks. You can cancel the agreement. I can, huh? Oh, yes. That's too bad. I got the money. It's in my name. How could you get it back from me? I couldn't. It's yours. Yeah, so I'm holding all the aces. You have a powerful hand. Yeah, I feel a bit weak. Ah, oh, there's a... There's an excellent brandy in the cabinet. Could you pour me a bit, please? Hey, smells pretty good here. You mind if I try a shot myself? Certainly not. After all, it belongs to you. Oh, yes. I forgot. Thank you. Well, happy days. So, the agreement's busted, huh? Oh, no. No, not the complete agreement. You see, only the part of it that gives you the two to three years. Is that right? I can't take a chance that you will live that long. Not at the rate you're going, so... So what? You are required to surrender your body on demand. Do you agree to remember? Sure, sure, I remember. You want some more of this brandy? No, but help yourself if you like. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, you were saying? I was saying you agreed to surrender your body on demand. But I demand it now. 
Huh? The exchange will be made tonight. There is a vital essence, a special quality, a unique consciousness that makes up the individual core of each of us. Is this essence, or soul, as some would call it, transferable? Mr. Leroy Fraser has bet close to a million that it is. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. To your love. But give your allergy to contact. Allergy is our business, too. We know pollen. And we know that any of the 12,000 quarts of air you breathe each day may contain enough pollen to make your eyes itch, make you sneeze, and drip. We also know an ingredient that helps block pollen's bad effects. It's the antihistamine most prescribed by allergy specialists. It's an ingredient in contact. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. To your love. Tiny time pills in one contact keep this antihistamine working up to 12 full hours, all day, all night. Give your to contact. Take contact only when needed, only as directed. Introducing the greatest taste to come out of your toaster since Samuel Bath Thomas baked his original English muffins in 1880. Thomas's new onion English muffins. Little bits of real onion blended into Thomas's original English muffin recipe create a tangy taste that makes everything fantastic, like burgers and cream cheese and cold cuts. Even butter tastes better. Thomas's new onion English muffins. The greatest new taste since 1880. Thomas's promises. Think she is. 300 feet if she's an inch, Luigi, and a fine lady she is. The year 1886. While most New Yorkers were enjoying their first look at the Statue of Liberty, a few were enjoying their first taste of Thomas's bread and discovering it was every bit as delicious as Thomas's English muffins. Today, there's still never been a lady to equal the lady or a bread to equal Thomas's protein, whole wheat, and white bread. Thomas's promises. Sweet, sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet, Marcello. Well, maybe it's a bit sweet, Sophia. On second thought, I love its bitterness. Ponte Ness. Is it bitter? Is it sweet? People have been arguing about it since 1786. Ponte Ness. A lovely before lunch or dinner drink from Italy. On the rocks or with soda and a slice of orange. Punt Mez, capital P-U-N-T, little e, capital M-E-S. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's bitter. It's sweet. All right, Sophia, it's bitter. No, my darling, let's just say it's bittersweet. Like life, like love, like marriage, Italian style. Punt Mez, Punt Reported by Caroline Importers Limited, New York, New York. Fraser and Jack Hanley have an agreement. They will exchange bodies. Each will become the other. Jack Hanley will become Leroy Fraser, old and infirm. Leroy Fraser will become Jack Hanley, young and vigorous. Maybe. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm laughing at you. At me? Yeah, at you. Do you really believe this? Believe what? Believe that we can swap bodies. Certainly. Certainly, he says, look, I took your dough. Ask me why. Why? Why? Be because an old clown like you, you had to lose it. It's like you were you were standing on a street corner. You were saying, here's my money. Take my money. Might just as well have been me. That's not exactly the way it happened. You received this money as part of an agreement. Oh, yeah, the agreement again. You and Della, you'd make a great pair. We might at that. You know, I must say, Pop, you're, you're, you are cool. I mean, you are very cool. You're sitting there with a bust hand, and you make out like you're holding a royal flush. Well, time for the exchange. <laughs> it will be over in a minute. <laughs> All a crazy idea. What makes you so sure you can do it? Well, you see, I've done it before. You what? Oh, yes. Many times. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Nobody. 
I'm serious. You're the one who keeps insisting this is a joke. Okay, okay, enough is enough. Look, I'm tired. I want to go to bed, so take off. Come on, Fraser, beat it. Look, don't make me throw you out of here. Try to get up, Jack. Huh? Just try to get up. Huh. Oh, <laughs> I feel kind of dizzy. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> we have an agreement, you and I. We have an agreement. No, no, no sir. That's the brandy. You did something to the brandy. But I drank it, too. And I feel fine. No, no, listen, Fraser. You can't. You can't... You can't do it. Have you read any of the books, Jack? The books? What books? The books on the shelves. Why? Why would I... So you would know, Jack. You'd know how it was done. I... I didn't read nothing. It doesn't matter. You shared the room, the wisdom, the power that is in the books. I I don't feel so good. No, Jack, you feel fine. Uh, There are just changes. Changes uh, taking place uh, in your soul. uh, What what kind of changes? Just changes that will prepare it for a journey. The journey from your body to mine. My soul is also preparing. She was right. She was right. She said she was scared. You should have listened to her. Ah! Ah! ah, My... Oh, my head. My head is splitting wide open. No, Jack, you're Ah. fine. You promised. You promised me three years. Two years, you promised. Ah, but Jack, I can't believe you. Ah, I can't... Breathe. Yes, you can, Jack. You're fine. Look, I, I promise you. No, Jack. I'll... I can't trust you. You, you can. I swear. With what you know now, you'll kill me. I, I feel cold. I, I, I feel stiff. I, there is a law. It's written in the book. No. No. The mind. The soul. The essence, the living force, the vital spirit, it's free, unfettered, unbound, escape, escape the petty prison of the faltering body, escape, be free, tearing at my inside, escape, leave me, leave this shattered hulk, leave me, go to him, no, With the magic of ancient Egypt, the wisdom of Greece, by all the sciences, the ancients knew, let our souls be free. I don't want to die. I have been the vital spirit in the bodies of 15 men before this night. Now, now, I shall become Jack Hanley. And how are you this morning, Mr. Fraser? Uh, what? Oh, I... I feel like I'm 80 years old. <laughs> well, the truth is, you're, you're not far from it. What, what, what are you saying? Now, Mr. Fraser... Oh, who, who are you calling Fraser? Oh, I know it's early in the morning, but we have things to discuss. I, I'm not Fraser. I'm, I'm Jack Hanley. Oh, this is not the time to joke, sir. It's only a... Don't you understand? I'm Jack Hanley. What, what, what am I doing here? How did I... Sir, please, look in this mirror. What? Oh, my now, God. Uh, sir, can we talk about... How did he do it? How did he put me into his old body? Oh, i better call the doctor. I get the doctor. Call the police. He stole my body. And, Doctor, he's got this crazy idea. He's somebody else. Doctor, I have to talk to you alone. Uh, Please excuse us, Mrs. Toomey. All right, Doctor. Listen, Doctor, I am not Leroy Fraser. No? No, I'm Jack Hanley. I'm I'm 28 years old. Come, Fraser. You're talking to me, the doctor. Oh, I'm Jack Hanley. 
Fraser somehow found a way, uh, maybe a drug or something. He was able to, to get me into his body, and, and, and he took mine for himself. I see. That's what happened. Fraser, old friend, you need rest. I'm not Fraser. Now, don't excite yourself, Leroy. You don't believe me. None of you believe... I know. I know you look at me like I'm a nut. Some rest and quiet and... Look, you're a doctor. You should see it. Of course, of course. F Fifty years ago, if a guy said you could transplant a heart, you'd say they were crazy. But they can do it today, eh? can't they? Well... Sure. Sure. So why couldn't somebody figure out a way to transplant a guy's soul? We'll discuss it first. No, we won't. We'll discuss it now. Della, she knows. She was afraid it would happen. Yeah. She'll prove it. No, Fraser. Now, don't you try to stop me. Hello? Della. Oh, who's this? Me. Who are you? Jack. Not Della, listen to me. It happened. It happened. What happened? The agreement, Della. He went and he did it. What? What are you saying? The answer. The answer's in those books. Now, Della, go to the apartment. Find the answer. Look through those books and hurry. Yeah, Della, she's going to prove it. And meanwhile, you'll just rest. Now, I'll be right back. How is he, Doctor? Well, we'll have to get him to a sanitarium. Whatever gave him the idea that he that he's a young man? A delusion. A not uncommon delusion. A yearning for better, happier times. Uh, should we get him ready to travel? Yes, go in and help him dress. I'll make some telephone arrangements. Oh, certainly, Doctor. Mr. Fraser? Mr. Fraser? Oh, Doctor! He, he's disappeared! <laughs> Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant Burns, remember me? I know, Pop. I can't say that I do. My name is Jack Hanley. Jack Hanley? Well, yeah. that sounds familiar, but, but, but he was a young guy. I am a young guy. Look, a man named Fraser, an old man, he stole my body and he left me his. Well... Oh, well, come on. Now, it's true. Yeah, sure, sure, Pop. Don't call me Pop. I'm younger than you are. Now, look, friend, why don't I have one of the officers take you home? I'm huh? Jack Hanley. I was here three days ago. Jack Hanley was here three days ago, not you. I am Jack Hanley, and I can prove it. Sure you can. Sure, sure. You called me cop fighter. Huh? Yeah. Cop fighter. How would I know that if I weren't Jack Hanley? Huh? If I, if I were some old man, how would I know that? Well, it's... And another thing, how would I know that your wife called while you were talking to me? What? Your wife, she called, huh? She said, your son had just said daddy. Now, wait a minute. How would I know that, eh, Sarge? Now, look, Burns, you're a cop. Well, you're a great guy, and you're the only chance I got. Well, what do you want me to do? Come over to the pad. Dell is there. She'll show you the books. I'll show you the brandy, and I'll prove to you how it was done. Adela can prove it. Now, come on, come on, come to the apartment with me. Well, come on in. Oh, sure. Sorry about last night, Della. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah, Della. And, honey, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Have you? About what? Oh, about you and me. Yeah? And? Well, you couldn't be too angry with me. How do you know? You wouldn't have come back here this morning. You want to know why I came back here? Why? I got a phone call from Fraser. Fraser? Why would Fraser call you? Well, it, it was kind of a, a crazy story. What did Fraser say? Would you answer a question first? Sure. Do I still remind you of... of George Sand? Oh. Well, do I? Yes. More and more every minute. <laughs> I looked her up. Her name was Amandine Dupin. <laughs> You could be right. What do you say we get out of here? Where are we going? I don't know. But we're both 28. And it's a long, long trip. Della! Della! 
Oh, hey, Pop. Now, what are you handing me? There's nobody here. Just last night. La la last night. Sure, was, sure, There Pop. were books on that shelf. Well, there. there's nothing there now. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, thank heavens you're safe. Ah, ma'am. Now, this old gent claims... Sergeant. That... Sergeant, I'm surprised at you. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yes? Oh, oh, for you, Sergeant Burns. Oh, thank you. Yeah? Oh, you check the bags. I see. No record of deposits in the name of Jack Hanley, huh? What? Well, naturally, where would a dumb hood like that don't, get money? Who'd give it to him? Don't you see? He's got my body. Sure, okay, I know. It was a wild thing, but give, give me you know how it is. Anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. Oh, Pop. Pop, what are we going to do with you? Don't call me that. Where's Della? She crossed me. She went with him. Now, Mr. Fraser, you, you'll feel so much better in the hospital. So much better. I am not Fraser. I'm Hanley. I am Jack Hanley. Won't anybody believe me? Now, look. Get some rest, oh, Pop. Right. Any, anybody believe me? No, you'll feel better with good food Someone, and lots of sleep. Somebody has to believe me. Won't anybody believe me? As he sits there, Leroy Fraser, or if you prefer, Jackson Hanley, he sits there in his room in a faraway sanitarium, and he keeps asking the question of everyone who will stop to listen. So far, no one believes him, or is willing to admit it. All I can admit right now is that I'll be back in just a few moments. When you drink beer, do you tilt the glass for long, hearty swallows? Or just tip it and sip it? Well, sipping's the thing for wine. But Budweiser beer is a hearty drink, brewed for zest and character. The best way to enjoy Bud is to drink it. Not chug a lug, just man sized beer drinker swallows. That's when that famous Budweiser taste, smoothness, and drinkability really come through. Smoothness and drinkability that come only from natural carbonation and exclusive beechwood aging. Smoothness and drinkability, too good for any half hearted sipping. So drink up. You'll see that brewing beer right does make a difference. And that when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. You've been hearing some pretty lavish claims recently about miles per gallon. We'd like you to consider something equally important, and that's range. Range is the miles per gallon multiplied by the number of gallons your car's tank holds. Range is what makes the Buick Apollo such a special small car. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Look into the Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I've just had to bear with it. Then I found sugar-free Diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes. This one's just right. Service. We're big on that. When you buy an airline ticket, you're buying service. And at Ozark, we try to give you your money's worth. Service and making reservations. Planning your trip at the ticket counter. Service on board. Ozark didn't get where it is by being small and things that really count. Service. We're big on that. Go Ozark Jet to Champaign-Urbana, Peoria, and Springfield, Illinois. Call Ozark or your travel agent. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Bryna Rayburn, William Redfield, Dan Ockel, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule, Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The Radio Mystery...